this video, we're going to look at a very general picture of how a photochemical reaction takes place and develop a very broad mechanistic paradigm for the vast majority of photochemical reactions. Generally speaking, photochemical reactions occur in three stages, and we're going to define those stages in this video and say just a little bit about, in general, what happens within the stages. In fact, it's going to be a major goal of this course to really get under the hood of each of these stages and understand what's going on in detail for different types of photochemical reactions. So let's get into it. We've seen this figure before as a general representation of a photochemical reaction mechanism, and we can kind of divide it up into three stages, and that's done using these lines through the figure that you see here. The first step or first stage is always absorption of a photon by some molecule. And that's represented here as the combination of a ground state molecule, R. Let's just make a note quickly here that here we're referring to a ground state molecule, generally speaking. This combines with a photon, which is represented as H nu. Planck's constant H times the frequency nu is the energy of the photon. And this generates star R, or R star, which is the excited state of R. This is an excited state of R, and the asterisk denotes the excitation, the idea that this is a molecule with some excess energy relative to the ground state. This is what we call absorption, and it's key to any photochemical process. We have to reach an excited state, and this is very commonly done through the absorption of a photon. There are ways to generate excited states that do not involve direct absorption of light. This is, for example, how glow sticks work. Um, we're not going to get into those at this point, um, but chemiluminescence, generally speaking, is what's going on there. Now, what about the second stage? Well, the second stage is very, very interesting. It's what's called the primary photochemical process, and it is some step or series of steps that occurs from the excited state, starting from the excited state. So with the excited state as a reactant, this is a process of great interest to us. This is called the primary photochemical process, and it's whatever occurs after the generation of the excited state. Well, the primary photochemical process can involve conversion to one of three different classes of species. The first at the top is an intermediate. That's why we use the letter I. But there's another thing to notice about this. I isn't just an inter intermediate. It's, it's not just interesting in that respect. It's also interesting because it appears to have lost the excitation energy. We have moved from the excited state, or what we'll call in the future the excited potential energy surface, to the ground state potential energy surface. And so this intermediate is on a surface that connects to the ground state of the product. Everything that happens from here on occurs on the ground state potential energy surface. And I'll go ahead and, and label this here. This may not make much sense now, but we'll clarify what this looks like very shortly. This type of process, because it involves two different potential energy surfaces, is often called diabatic. You'll also hear it referred to in kind of a double negative sort of way with non-A diabatic. Uh, but diabatic evokes the idea of two potential energy surfaces. And so I like to use this term for this type of reaction, and it's, it's extremely common. Now, in, in other cases, the excited state can stay on the excited state potential energy surface and generate an excited state intermediate, or in fact, the product in an excited state. So here we retain the asterisk, and now we're dealing with only a single potential energy surface. And so this is called A diabatic because we're living only on one potential energy surface, going from excited R to excited I or P. And the key here again, and the key difference from the top process, is that now we're dealing with not a ground state intermediate or product, but an excited state intermediate or product, which is very interesting. These are generally less common than diabatic reactions, I'd say, although for triplet states, these can take place and are somewhat more frequent than for singlet states, because, for reasons we'll see later, the triplet state has a more difficult time converting to a ground singlet state than an excited singlet state has converting to a ground singlet state. Now, the third option, which cuts right through the middle, involves a species that is neither an intermediate nor a product, but does involve crossing from the excited state potential energy surface to the ground state surface. 
And it's through a structure, we would say, you know, we don't want to call this an intermediate because it's not exactly a stable structure, but it is a point on the potential energy surfaces where they cross called a funnel. And so the letter F here represents funnel and moving through a funnel takes us directly from the excited state potential energy surface to the product structure without the intermediacy of an intermediate. This is very common in photochemical pericyclic reactions and other types of reactions that occur in a concerted manner from excited R directly to product. Now, I have not introduced the third stage, and the reason for that is often what happens in the third stage is not exactly photochemical. Notice in the first um, and second cases that we're now on the ground state potential energy surface. So everything that's happening there, we could argue, doesn't require photochemistry, right? Everything there is, is what we call a secondary thermal process or processes. The idea is, for example, once we've generated a ground state intermediate, this can react further. This is very common because I is very often a highly unstable structure to, to reach the product, but that reactivity is entirely ground state in nature. It's, it's not exactly photochemical, right? It's, it's essentially thermal. If we could generate I via thermal means, we could see that same kind of reactivity. And strictly speaking, secondary thermal processes really only apply to this first case because F to P is a purely downhill in energy process, as we will see. And going from the excited intermediate product to the ground state product can actually involve primary photochemical processes, we, we might say, from this excited state. And so we're just kind of kicking the can along the road, we might say, um, and a funnel or a ground state intermediate may be in the future of I star or P star. So we're gonna leave this picture now, but I just wanna emphasize that this is very important to keep in mind as we dig into photochemical reactions moving forward. This general picture, we're gonna come back to time and time again to help us understand and classify photochemical reactions. Now, let's dig into the primary process just a little bit. This is the conversion of the excited state R, which was generated via absorption, to a funnel, an intermediate, or a product, possibly in an excited state. And we can, looking at potential energy surfaces, distinguish some specific cases that we may see here. And so the first is what we call a hot ground state reaction. Now, what's going on here? Well, in a hot ground state reaction, we have excitation to the excited state of R. Let's represent that here. And this curve that you see up here is the excited state potential energy surface. We'll come back to this again and, and dig into potential energy surfaces in more detail. But for the time being, take my word for it, the y-axis is energy and the x-axis is something like a reaction coordinate as we change the nuclear coordinates for the ground or, or excited state. In a hot ground state reaction, the excited state converts to a high vibrational level of the ground state. And that vibrational energy is dissipated, and you can see that here is this wavy line, and that either returns to the ground state of the reactant, here it's A, or moves on to product. This type of reaction is, is relatively rare, and the reason is that vibrational relaxation very often returns the molecule back to A. And so they can be highly inefficient even when they, when they do occur. So hot ground state reactions, while rare, we do see from time to time. Adiabatic reactions, we've actually already seen and alluded to. And the idea here is that we go from the excited state of here, it's, it's A, and let me actually go back and change this to an A, just so we're clear that A is the reactant. A converts to excited state of B, and then B emits a photon to return to the ground state a single potential energy surface is involved in this process, and this is why it's called adiabatic. It does not involve two potential energy surfaces. Diabatic reactions are very common, and these do involve two potential energy surfaces. So as always, we start with absorption of a photon. A is converted to its excited state, A star, and most commonly through a funnel, or what we will sometimes call a conical intersection in three dimensions. This looks like two cones bumping up against each other, but at this key point, there is a crossing over from the excited state potential energy surface to the ground state potential energy surface. So if we chart the progress of, say, the, the nuclear coordinates from the excited state of A through to the product, we see that we start on an upper 
surface here, and we move to the lower surface. So there's a crossing over from the excited state to the ground state. This is why this is called a diabatic process. Very, very common, particularly in uh, photochemical pericyclic reactions, as we'll see. Now, reaction via intermediate in D is subtly different from the diabatic reaction, because now, instead of the potential energy surfaces crossing, we have a point where we reach an excited intermediate, that I star that we saw on the last slide. And this converts to the ground state without emitting a photon and then proceeds on to products. So there's a gap between the ground and excited potential energy surfaces and the, the molecule essentially needs to traverse that gap through a, a quantum mechanical process that is a little bit mysterious, but we'll try to lend some clarity to the nature of these transitions uh, right here across gaps when we're talking about reaction via an excited intermediate. This is a very common paradigm as well. 